In 2017, I bought this simple cabin in the north of Sweden. And one and a half years later, I made it into my permanent home. I bought it for around $28,000, but I poured my heart and soul into this place. I've actually spent most of my savings pursuing this dream. And today, I want to show you something very special. I actually was smart enough to film the very first day I bought this place. So I walked around with the camera in all the rooms, show all the details. So today, I'm going to give you a complete tour of what it looked like back then, compared to today. So we'll start the tour in the hallway, back in 2017, the day I bought the place. And this is what it looks like today. That's the staircase, painted in a different color, have some mats on it, and yeah. These things in the corner don't normally stand here, <laughs> but I'm doing a big renovation at the moment, so they have to be somewhere, and that was the only spot I could fit them. Here we have a bit of a clothing rack, but the biggest change is actually above us. Up here, it used to be a ceiling before. You will see that from a different angle a bit later. Um, but this is something completely new. I decided to, you can see here, actually, this is where the floor used to be, and it went all the way out basically out to that one and then to the wall. But I felt like the cabin was so, it's so low in the ceiling and it felt very limiting when you went into the cabin. I wanted some space and air, so it felt, I felt a bit more welcoming. So I spent quite a lot of time removing, removing the floor, even though removing the, the ceiling or the floor from the hallway was the biggest project. It was not the most expensive one. It was actually this. The doors, uh, because when I moved here, the doors were really beautiful, but they had a big crack in the middle. They were like this thick, uh, or thin, I should say, and they were leaking a lot, which is kind of tough when you live in the north when it's so cold. So I contacted a girl called Åsa, uh, that has a company renovating and doing old windows and doors, and uh, yeah, she's placed in Näsåker. Uh, she's very talented. And she took on this project of making a double door for us, which turned out so good. And that was the most expensive part, but so well worth it. And this is what the living room looked like in 2017. And this is what it looks like today. First big investment was getting a dog. <laughs> Her name is Tuss. But yeah, we've done a lot of things in here. We quite recently painted the ceiling white, so that's a major difference. Me and my dad actually built this table from the floor, old floorboards from the kitchen. So that took a, took a while, but it's also fun to keep the history of the cabin, but in a different format. This couch was actually here from the beginning, but stood in another house. Then we added storage, added some lamps, like a place to store the, the firewood, some bookshelves, and then what we call a hengekoi or a, yeah, a little hammock. I sit in a lot. And over here, this is what I, one thing I bought maybe two years ago, three years ago, air heating pump. Because these walls, as you see here, all around, that's the only thing that is on this cabin. There's no insulation on the inside. There's no insulation on the outside. This is it. Uh, and from the very beginning, I only had that thing. And over here is my least favorite place of this cabin, actually. This is where I sit and edit all my videos, in this tiny little corner. But I'm hoping to change that quite soon, because we're right now building a A-frame up on the forest, about 80 meters from here, where I'm gonna sit and have my studio, so we can make this little corner into something a bit more cozy. 2018 was the first winter I ever lived here permanently, and I moved in in December, and I quite quickly learned that 2018 was one of the worst winters 
we'd have had here in the north in like, I can't remember if it was like 30 years. So my very first year was quite challenging to say the least. Back then I didn't have the e air heating pump and I didn't even have this stove. Um, I had the fireplace and its hole in its hole, but I didn't have the stove. So it was just an open fireplace, which basically means that all the heat and all the coziness that the fire in this area would produce just goes straight out the chimney and yeah, disappears. What I did in that very first winter is that I placed a bed right in front of this fireplace um, and I woke up almost every hour and threw on more firewood on this open fireplace to keep warm because if I didn't it was frost on the inside of the cabin. So it was very much necessary to sleep this close, but sleeping so close with like a lot of flammable fabrics uh, was not the smartest thing either. Because uh, when you have this thing right here, it keeps the sparks, you know, within the stove, obviously. But when you're sleeping so close and it's an open fireplace, a lot of coal or what do you call it, flames bursted out from there here and there. So I woke up at least two times from one time my sleeping bag was on fire or it was starting to at least burn. And then one time one of my socks <laughs> was on fire. So it was a bit of a risk taking, but at the same time, that was the only option I had. So um, that's how I did it. But now let's move on to the kitchen. I'll show you what it looked like back in 2017. And this is what the kitchen looks like today. Quite a complete different look. I actually tore out the entire kitchen, one of the first big projects I did when I moved here. So the floor is completely new. I ripped that out and as I said, that those boards became the our living room table. But the brand new floor, I built my own little sink over here. I get the, got this one out of flea market. I cut this tree parts out myself and I put up some shelves like that. Old, we call them apple boxes in Sweden. Like these ones, some hangers from the, for the pots and pans. This is also actually one of the old uh, floorboards from the kitchen. You can see how massively thick it is. I think it's like five centimeters or something. And this is how they put the floors together back then. They had like all these knobs, like a little thing that went in here and then another thing that went in the other plank that way. So this wood burning stove is something that we placed here ourselves. Uh, this whole thing was not even built. There was a, like a foundation of concrete that we can put it on. We had to extend it a bit, um, but then we can place it here. But the funny thing is that I remember I had to carry this whole thing uh, from the car out in the parking lot. Um, and as you can probably guess, this weighs a ton. Not literally a ton, but yeah, a lot at least. I dragged it up on like a sled through the snow and then carried it like centimeter for centimeter, just pushed it a bit and then finally got it in here. But what I like about having a wood burning stove and not an electrical stove is that when we have like a power outage or something, we are still in full control of our heating and our food and our water and everything because if the power cuts out for some reason because that happens from time to time we can still cook food on this one it will give us warmth uh, same thing with the stove in the uh, living room that will give us heat no matter what um, so it's just nice to be being a bit more control if uh, things just should disappear like electricity or something we still have this one and for me, that's such a relief. But one thing I would like to do in the future is to paint these things uh, white, actually, because now they're like a dirty gray. I always picture myself painting it white, but I've never gotten around to doing it. But one funny thing that I've never told anyone before, but like I would like to show you right now. <laughs> Can you see the brick patterns that is right here? Like all these cuts like this. That's not actually brick, or it is brick way 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 behind this wall 
these are actually faked by me. I've used this one, and when we had a flat surface here, I actually used this one to like create this little pattern because I like the look of having uh, these kind of the yeah the brick look basically. And it was the same thing with this fridge. I bought it in a town about one and a half hours away from here, put it in my car, and then I carried it all the way from the car up into the cabin. Took a whole day, I remember. It was also winter. Quite struggling, but today it's a funny story to tell. And over here I would like to show you as well. This is a very messy corner, I know, <laughs> I know that. We have too little storage based on how much stuff we actually do have in the kitchen. But I don't know if you can see it, but these are like made out of these rolls that cables come on. I don't know what you call them actually, if I had to be completely honest. But it's three of them stacked on top of each other. And I actually think it's quite pretty. It's not very functional when everything like this is open. Because that's, dust gets everywhere and we also have mou mouses. No? Mouses... Mice! Yeah, mice is plural. So yeah, we have some mice here and there sometimes. But we hadn't had them for a few months now actually. I feel like I'm rushing through this tour a bit. So if I'm forgetting something that you would like to ask about, please do so in the comments and I'll try to be as quick as possible to answer. But now, let's move upstairs. So this is what it looked like when you walked upstairs back in 2017. And this is what it's like to go upstairs in 2023. So this was a room we just renovated this spring actually, so just a few months ago. Me and my friend Lars actually built this railing ourselves. It's made out of cast iron, I don't know if you can see it. I really love the look of it. And it was not only for being pretty, but it was also very functional because the floor upstairs here used to end. You can see the difference here. These are a bit of older planks and these are the ones we renovated for this floor. So the upstairs used to end here and there was no fence, no nothing. So you basically, when you walked here, you look down like that. So there's nothing in between you and falling over. So it was quite stupid for us adults and the dogs and our future kids to not protect ourselves a bit more, I would say. And if you remember from the footage from 2017, this is where the, the closet was standing. You can actually see where it used to go. That was the old line and it went all the way out here and then all the way there and covered this wall by right here. You can see this is where it used to end. But again, I would way, way rather have it like this. Open, you feel welcome when you come in. It's spacious, it's airy. Yeah, it's just way, way better. And this thing right here is a bit of a funny story. We don't have any running water in this cabin. There's no toilet, no bathroom, no nothing. But we have a very, very high-end projector. So this whole black thing back there is the screen is 150 inch, basically like a home movie theater. And Christine also painted this door green, which made the room actually pop even a bit more because it lacked a bit color because it's so beige and white. So the green color was just a perfect add-on. I would say that the main reason for us building and renovating this room is because we as a family never had a cozy corner. We never had a place to hang out, to watch movies, nothing like that. And I remember when I lived in the city and the apartment I used to have was like the couch was almost the main room. And not because of the TV, because we almost never watched TV. We can easily sit down and watch a movie or a series, but 
TV is never on. We don't have the regular channels or anything like that. So for us to have the couch to hang out in was such an important thing. Um, so I think that's why we prioritize this room before most things actually. Because it's such a, yeah, it feels like almost, I know you say that the kitchen is the heart of the house, but I, for me it's almost where the couch is. I don't know if you agree with that or it's just um, me that thinks like that. And yeah, it is a bit funny that we have a projector worth so insanely much money and we don't even have running water or a toilet. Um, but that's my prioritization. And it's also, of course, just because it's so much easier to just buy a projector and just put it there and then you're done with the whole project basically. But building a whole another section to the house, applying for permits, building, plumbing, that's a big project, but we're gonna get there one day. But now let's move into the last room. The bedroom. So this is the bedroom back in 2017. And this is what the bedroom looks like today. A bit cozier, if you ask me. <laughs> We have the bed right here in the middle. We have our what we call our closets. This is Christine's side over here with all of her books. We have my side here. Guitar and some film gear over there. And that's the chimney popping out right there. We have some small bookshelves there on the side. Like that. This is one of my favorites actually. In Sweden we call it Säng Himmel. Bed. Sky. <laughs> I don't know what you call it in English. But for me, even though the ceiling is quite low, like it is right now, as you can see, it adds another layer of coziness somehow. Like I feel very tucked in. And it's cozier to be surrounded by soft fabrics compared to just <laughs> wooden planks. One of the downsides of this room is the low ceiling. As you can see, it's very low. No trouble, trouble touching it. And the beams right here is very much in head height. And as you could probably guess, the main problem with that is when you're getting up in the morning, you're very tired and you just sit up straight like this. And then when you stand up, smack right into the head. Uh, it doesn't happen to me anymore because it's such a muscle memory of just like bending bending down like this and just crawling out. Uh, I've gotten used to it, uh, but every time we have guests sleeping here, <laughs> they always hit their head. And it's the same thing out in the couch, actually. The beams are just over the couch. So as soon as we're done watching a movie, they're like, oh, okay, let's go down and cook some food and then just stand up and you just hear, boom. And you don't realize how fast you're standing up sometimes until you actually hit your head. So that's a bit of a downside. But on the other hand, it's very cozy. That was the tour of the main cabin. But now let's head outside and I'll show you one of the other buildings on this property. So this is the cabin we have our sauna in. And from the very beginning when I bought this place, it was just a room and nothing else. And I thought about for the longest time that it should be a sauna. But I didn't know how to fix it. But luckily my friends Fabian and Matthias jumped into the rescue and last spring, so about seven or eight months ago, we actually renovated it completely into a functioning sauna that I use at least twice a week. But first let's look at it, look at it what it looked like back in 2017. This is what it looks like today. So I completely painted it white to make it feel a bit more fresh. I actually fixed and treated the floor with some oils as well. We have our toilet in that corner now. And as you remember maybe from the footage that I just showed you, here was a door before. 
like on this edge right here. So it was very low ceiling that you had to duck, <laughs> duck to get in. Um, and it's, yeah, the whole ceiling is just ripped out. And in this corner I've created like a little shower without actual water. <laughs> you can take your bucket in this corner after you're done with the sauna if you want to. And then just take a small shower in here and then there's a, like a little drainage there for the water. But to the main attraction, the sauna. This is what it looks like in here. It's quite dark. That's better. We created some lovely seats to sit on. The stove right there. And yeah, this is, <laughs> it's truly is my man cave. I spent so much time in here. And I'm very happy how, how well it turned out. And it fits so many people. We're not often getting that much big companies, but when we do, this is absolutely perfect. And since we live without running water, um, having a sauna has been such a big difference when it comes to getting clean and feeling clean. Because the way we're taking showers, we took showers before the sauna, was basically just to heat up a bucket of water and then you stood outside in the snow and then you just poured over your head and that was the way you got clean. And you got clean, but you didn't really feel clean. But that's the main difference with the sauna, you feel so insanely clean. So the best thing I love to do is end the evenings with sitting in here, taking an ice bath and then going up to bed and sleep. And you have, you sleep like a baby. You feel so clean, you're warm and just, yeah, sauna is like the best thing ever. But I would say that the biggest and most expensive renovation we have ever done is uh, the roof of the cabin, because when I bought the place, this the cabin was completely uninsulated in the roof. There was no insulation as well, at all. It was inner wall, inner ceiling, and then there was an air gap, and then metal sheets on top of that, and that was it. So all the heat that I managed to create in the cabin just just went straight out the roof. But that's a bit hard to show you. I have several videos of it that you can check out if you want to see those renovation projects, but it's not a really good like a before and after picture because the ceiling, or no, the roof have just increased a few decimeters. Uh, so it's not like a wow factor in, in that sense. I don't know if you've seen it, but I've actually started a second channel here on YouTube and we just released our third video. And when I say we, it's actually me and my friend Andreas. And the third video was filmed entirely here in the cabin. And I have to say without bragging too much, I think it's the most beautiful thing I've ever filmed and been a part of. So I'm very proud of it. It's very cinematic, it's very beautiful. So I hope you're gonna like it too. I'll leave it here on the screen so you can check it out. Otherwise, I will just see you guys in the next video. Take care and I'll see you then. Bye.